Voice over data networks, how to design a VoIP network. Why I have created this training? I have created this training because of two reasons. The first reason is, oh, sorry, is knowledge leveling before the start. I have, I have taught this training several times in the starting and the start of uh, voice over IP projects usually for knowledge leveling, to level the knowledge of all the participants. Usually you're in a, in a company, sometimes a big company, and they already have uh, two network engineers or people that are going to participate in a project. So the first thing we usually do, we use this training to, to level the knowledge. They need to know what is an FXS interface, what is an FXO, what is an E1 or T1, how to integrate the legacy, some QoS basic uh, basics. So it's important to deliver the knowledge before you start a voice over IP project. The second reason why I have created this training is to see that how many asterisk implementations have QoS enabled or a formal dial plan or a formal dimension. Uh, in the beginning of the VoIP, there were only proprietary PBXs, proprietary stuff. And I used to work with Cisco, and Cisco has something that it's really nice. Formal education design guidelines. So instead of looking at the software itself, like asterisk software, it's you have to look at the, the whole picture, the big picture. Um, you, you won't have a good voice quality if you don't have QoS most of the times. Uh, so you need to have QoS enabled to make sure that you, you will have a good voice quality. Uh, sometimes you need a, a formal dial plan. You need to dimension the number of channels, the number of uh, the amount of bandwidth that you have to reserve on your QoS. So there are many important decisions to make before you start. And I see that many people just focus on the, on the software. So there is a difference in terms of how many implementations have success on proprietary PBX compared to how many implementations have success on open source PBXs. And one of the problems is most of people, not most of people, but many people working with open source PBX do not have, do not have the, the big picture view. They do, do not see VoIP as a whole, that you need to have QoS enabled, that you need to have a formal dial plan, that you need to have a VoIP design before you start the project. You need to level the knowledge. You need to communicate your dial plan. There are many things that you have to worry to have to have success. So success factors for proprietary PBXs, design guidelines. If you're implementing a Cisco project, there are some design guidelines that you should follow. There is formal training and certification. And this makes a lot of difference in the rate of success between an open source project and a in a proprietary PBX project. So the objective of this training is to introduce you on the VoIP design and to teach you how, hey, you need QoS enabled on the switch. Uh, what does it take to implement QoS on a switch? You need to implement QoS on a router. If you use compressed RTP, you can reduce your bandwidth. There are many important things that are on this training. And I hope this training helps a lot of uh, implementers all over the world and a lot of salespeople to have more success when implementing uh, a VoIP project. Asterisk is great. Asterisk, Frisk Switch, Yate, they are very good projects. It's very hard in these days to find a bug on the software. They are, they are seen by many people. There are millions of implementations. But many times I hear in the market, hey, Asterisk is not good or something is not good. Uh, but why? Because sometimes the design is not correct. They don't have care about QoS, quality of service. Then they have problems with voice. They don't care about security. Then they have problems with fraud. There are many things that you need to check before you start a VoIP project. VoIP design. What's a VoIP design? Why is, is it necessary? Uh, it's always important to have a plan before you start something, to have a design. So VoIP design is about to make informed decisions. What's the architecture? Are you going to use a centralized approach and put your PBX on the cloud and just throw phones on every place? Are you going to work distributed, one PBX on each branch and a proxy in the middle? 
there are many many ways to to create a vibe design and it's important that you make your decision an informed decision uh, VoIP design is also about to attend specific objectives what do you want with your VoIP project do you want to reduce your your phone bill uh, do you want to improve the communication on your branches do you want to reduce your PBX bill many people are just replacing to VoIP because they they don't don't want to pay the high fees for proprietary PBXs in these days. Uh, VoIP design is about to present return on investment. If a product does not have return on investment so far, it, it won't work, it, it won't be implemented. Companies are are very strict in these days on how to, in which uh, designs, which projects they will put some effort. VoIP design deliverables. What you need to deliver when you do the design? The topology is the first thing. Where are the equipments? How they are interconnected? What's the layer 3 design? What are the IP addresses you're going to use? Dimensioning of channels and bandwidth. How you're going to dimension the channels? How you're going to dimension the bandwidth? Network design. QoS, what you're going to implement in terms of QoS. I'm going to reserve 30% for voice over IP. I want to use CRTP. Do I have to use uh, fragment and interleaving? So this should be planned. Dial plan, how are you going to, to, to dial between the branches? So I'm going to use a three digit dial plan, a five digit dial plan. Where are my features? Asterisk two is to transfer or asterisk one or asterisk eight to capture. These things have to be informed. You need, sometimes it's, it's nice to have a cardboard besides the phone just to inform how the dial plan is dialed because many users simply don't know how to use the, the PBX. Legacy integration and migration plan. Hey, you have a legacy PBX with 3,000 extensions. Are you going to throw away this, this, this PBX or are you going to integrate using an E1 or using a set channel? Bill of materials. What the customer needs to buy. Physical and financial schedule. When things will happen. When the customer will have to pay for something. When the customer has to install something. And the training and operating plan. Okay, now it's ready. It's running who's going to operate the system, what's the training available, what they need to know to operate the system. New chapters in the future. Uh, VoIP design is never complete. I, I couldn't say that this training is complete. Uh, there are always new technologies, new developments, new things to add in the training. Uh, in the future, I plan to use this training as a placeholder for new chapters, for new technologies, I know there's a lot of things that are not covered on this training and I would like to cover it. But at some day I have to put this training online. I can't I can't spend one year, two years to build the training and then okay, now I have everything ready and then there are more things to, <laughs> to insert because some things got obsolete, some things are new. So my idea is let me release as it is. It's it's fairly complete. And then let me add in the future new technologies on them. And I will also want to know your feedback about the training, what you want included, and I'll try my best to, to put more content on this training. I usually build a video, at least one video per day, and then there's always room to, to insert more content on this training. Uh, how to watch this training on any order. If you're new in the area, start with the fundamentals. But if you're not new, if you want to check go, uh, QoS, go straight there. If you want to look at E1s, go straight to E1s. You don't need, this trainer does not have prerequisites between one uh, specific area and the other. So you can watch in the order you want. You don't need to watch from the beginning to the end. So this is the training. Welcome. I hope you enjoy and I hope you design better VoIP networks. Your feedback is highly required. Uh, this training has a lot to improve, I know, and I want to receive your feedback to, to do it. There's nothing better than the feedback of the user to improve things. Thank you.